Good evening and welcome to Her Vigrant News for You, which, in the light of the current world situation, has just been cancelled. In the news this week, in <laughs> Afghanistan, there's bad news for one toddler as the SAS takes part in National Bring Your Daughter to Work Day. <laughs> as the economic consequences of the war begin to bite, the Queen does her bit and assigns staff to essential duties only. And at this year's auditions for the Bolshoi Ballet, one young hopeful regrets taking a shot of brandy to calm her nerves. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team is a Labour MP who once likened the farce of Prime Minister's question time to this programme, hard to dispute as a bald bloke called Ian invariably ends up the loser, Andrew <laughs> McKinley. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight is the BBC's royal correspondent who was once told you look like a horse that's eaten a bucket of sour plums soaked in vinegar. And you can see the full interview with Prince Philip tomorrow on BBC <laughs> One. Jenny Bond. <laughs> uh, round one allows us to criticise the major news events of the week uh, from the safety of this bunker in South London. <laughs> Ian and Andrew. Well, this is, I think, the uh, casting for Aladdin at Thameside Theatre in Thurrock. And that's one of those moderate yes. Talibans we keep hearing about. <laughs> ah, well, this is my good colleague, Paul Marsden. No, it isn't. Look, no, it's a woman. No, <laughs> that's that's Hilary Arntwister. Uh, she's a chief whip, isn't she? She is a Hilary chief whip. Yeah, it's a, a very fine woman. Right. And, uh, um, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I mean, sometimes you have to go to the chief whip and you say, look, I need time off. I've got a terrible, terrible headache. And she'll tell you to go and see a pairing whip. And he looks at you and he says, you don't look unwell to me. And he gets this thing out. <laughs> so are you really absolutely, totally sure that you are not feeling very well? <laughs> I get the feeling you're not very well at all, <laughs> Uh, can I borrow that? I've got to open some posts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, what was Hilary Armstrong complaining about then in her showdown with your friend, as you say? He just wasn't just singing from the same song sheet. It wasn't a message, mm. and that is a big problem. She told him to uh, stop using the media, didn't she? That, that, that's correct, I think. And, um, and which he, to... he obviously took a lot of notice of. He had the most ludicrous <laughs> idea, which was that um, in the middle of a war, um, to protect democracy, there should be a vote about it. It's yeah. laughable, really, isn't it? <laughs> it is an absurdity. In a modern-day parliament, we don't have a vote on whether or not we should go to war. And Paul Marsden rightly said, this is a matter of conscience. I actually agree the stewardship of this crisis by the Prime Minister has been very good. But people have well, a right... that'll save you. Pe people have a right to dissent, <laughs> and that's being denied to them. Right, thank mm. you. That's the first serious point we've ever made on this programme. <laughs> And probably the last. Uh, who else has been casting aspersions on the war? Um, one of your colleagues, in fact, Jenny. Oh, dear Kate, oh, yes, yes. Mm. It's all... She says she's one of the old trouts. Well, I'm one of the old trouts, too, so um, she's feeling a bit... No, no. Oh, no. yes. Sorry, I'll be slow there. Slightly late, yes. <laughs> uh, so how has the rock world contributed this week to, um, to the war effort? <laughs> Well, a lot of rocks have been bombed in Afghanistan. <laughs> rock music. Uh, rock know, music, it's, sorry. It's a new thing that young people tend to listen to. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, some very, very old men um, gave a concert in New York. Yes, that'll be them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Paul, McCartney. Paul McCartney. He did his, what is it, give war a chance. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, who else was there? All those old rebels. <laughs> the Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah. Mick Jagger actually said if there's one lesson to be learnt from this, it's that you don't f with New York. <laughs> well, he has. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard Gere was booed off. Do you know why? No, no, he uh, made some vaguely um, worried sentiment about um, the world's biggest country bombing the world's poorest. And he got booed off. Yes. His compassion only goes so far. <laughs> yes, I think he mentioned the word forgiveness, which is obviously unforgivable. 
And the Sun suggested that the Taliban might have requested Paul McCartney to sing various amusing songs, such as uh, Muller Kintyre. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's been good and bad news for Bin Laden this week. Well, he didn't have to listen to that concert. That was... <laughs> that was a plus. Um, no, the CIA are now authorised to assassinate him. Right. Uh, which is the bad news. Uh, all they have to do is find him first, obviously. <laughs> and the good news is that his training video is now available in a shop in Birmingham. <laughs> Jenny, you've been to the Afghan border, haven't you, in your days? Oh, yes, to, well, to the Hindu Kush I have been, yes, with Prince Philip, as it happens. Right. How was that? Um, well, it was pretty, pretty dusty, pretty remote. Um, a bit like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is the continuation of the war against terror, which uh, this week saw unexpected introduction of ground forces, or helicopter crews, as they were originally known. <laughs> Osama bin Laden <laughs> is uh, said to be supported by British Muslim Abu Hamza, who famously lost a hand 15 years ago, according to strict Islamic code. One of your hands is used for eating, while the other serves for toilet duties. Uh, luckily for Abu, he's mastered the art of eating with a hook. <laughs> Paul and um, Jenny, uh, your royal appointment. Oh, it's our boy Will. Will Wales there going to university at St Andrews, watched by all the crowds, and the press, who dutifully uh, went away, except for this man's crew. Prince Edward, yes. Yep, they stayed, upset his brother. He had put a silly hat on, he was so upset. <laughs> and, um, and his parents, actually, were oh. so, so annoyed, they ran away to Scotland. Prince Philip lying up the Queen as she gets into the car. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bit of a bust-up. There was a bit of a royal bust-up, yes. Mm. So and how cross is Charles? Charles is very cross indeed. Charles he, is incandescent. incandescent. Yes, that's what he said. <laughs> a yep. palace aide said uh, he didn't just call him an effing idiot, but an effing everything under the sun. <laughs> we don't need quotes. We've got Jenny Bond here. Now, what did he really say? <laughs> Uh, well, I think he was very cross indeed, yes, Ian, she says diplomatically. <laughs> so, uh, who was it that um, shopped ardent Edward's uh, company to the authorities then? It was the press secretary, actually, who uh, spotted a producer outside uh, right. the university and said, what are you doing here? But so, did Edward know that he was stalking his own brother? Uh, don't know. <laughs> I don't, don't know? Don't know. <laughs> Point of being a royal very, very correspondent. Murky. Very murky. He must have known, because otherwise, if he didn't know, he'd just be sort of like an ignorant tosspot, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, we know As he's, said, we know he's not that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, didn't Arden misbehave in other ways? Employees were offering students a curry. Yep, they bought them a curry. They bought the ten, ten little guys. Is that not allowed now, no, under Mr allowed. Blunkett's new legislation? <laughs> well, weren't they saying, pretend now mm. that we're sort of eight months in the future <laughs> and months, that yeah. William's been here for sort of like a couple of terms and then you can talk about how he mm. settled in and stuff like that? Well, uh, I call it misbehaviour anyway, which is uh, not what you find at the BBC, is it, Jenny? Although Channel 4 can't always be relied upon. She's been a little ambivalent but about the whole of the celebrations. Uh, we're told it did take her quite a long time to realise people were as enthusiastic as, uh, as they are about uh, her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see the Queen Mother still gets out and about. <laughs> did you say that was Channel 4? Uh, apparently, it's the yes. The big breakfast bunny, yes. Yes. Do you remember your other great regret that day? Oh, dear. Um, what, oh, the, dear. The, the purple mm. dress? Um... <laughs> Well, there are occasions, I suppose, when, you know, you get up in a great hurry, and um, that was some, one such occasion. And I did have to then go up a, a, a ladder, which was about 30 foot high oh. and extremely vertical, and it was quite a breezy day. And, um, and when I got to the top, I remembered. I thought, my producer said yesterday, whatever you do, Jenny, remember to wear knickers. And I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Killed in a hurry. Exactly. Happen. So the result was, of course, that Edward apologised, uh, and he's announced this week that there's going to be no more um, royal documentaries, we gather. So that presumably means no more programmes at all. Well, no, they say they've got lots of, uh, but his mother has said, look, I'm very, very sorry the family's caused you this difficulty. Here's £100,000 to be getting on with. Oh, yes. well, that's nice, isn't it? Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's very happy, good. Is Edward, do you think, the Queen's favourite? Well, I think he, uh, he is the favourite because he, he's, he's the youngest. The babies of the family are for now. Yeah. Aren't they quite keen to give him the title of um, Duke of Edinburgh as well when he oh, pops it? God. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not another one. <laughs>
Um, this is uh, Prince Edward's decision to uh, stop making TV shows about the royal family. According to the Mirror, the ardent crew were filming for a series Edward had sold to a US cable TV network, the A to Z of royalty. Although Edward was apparently astonished to learn they wanted as many as 26 episodes. <laughs> Uh, that series has now been axed after only getting as far as C. Still, at least that covered Prince Philip. <laughs> Ian and Andrew, a headline for you. Beckett filleted. Uh, well, I think this is... Uh, good stories about Beckett this week. She uh, had to explain why uh, some scientists had confused brains of cows with brains of sheep. But the problem for them, it was pate. And it's all being gunged up and everything. Mm. And there was a test about the people who conducted the test, but they weren't quite sure about the testers of the testers of the testers, if you follow me. It's very complicated, yeah. but it was a monumental screw-up. Mm. But she didn't say that um, the government's top scientists had spent four years testing um, what they thought were sheep's brains, but actually they were cows. That's she correct. said there'd been a problem with the data or something, didn't she? And it was mm. passing by this time, you see. That, that's yes. the problem. Mm. So it's very difficult. I mean, do you know it what... Is, it is the, difficult, the, isn't it? The, the, Cow, uh, sheep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know the Labour Party's not very keen on the countryside, but... What's Margaret Beckett been accused of, then? What syndrome is she supposed to be suffering from? Joe Moore's syndrome. That's right. Oh, That's great. Burying bad news late at night. Mm. So what was the reason for the mix-up? Both got four legs. Mm. Yep. <laughs> uh, no, they, they were stored together by mistake. That might have been one reason. Or mislabelling, because of the word bovine and ovine. Ah, no, yeah, yeah, I think you're unreasonable then, I mean... He needs <laughs> yes. a load of ollocks. Yeah. <laughs> they should have called them cow and sheep. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> um, it's the shocking revelation that uh, government research scientists were unable to tell whether what they were looking at was sheep's brains or cow's brains, a uh, feeling you'll be familiar with if you've ever bought anything from a late-night burger van. Paul <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Jenny. Another nine for you. Land of dope and glory. Uh, this is the, about the possibility of Ian Duncan Smith becoming Prime Minister. <laughs> uh, very first not. time that identical twins have ever led the Conservative Party. <laughs> yes, it is extraordinary. <laughs> Although you only ever see one of them at a time. I don't know why it is. It's probably because it's not to confuse people. Mm. <laughs> Which paper was it you read this in? <laughs> uh, yeah, that, was in the, um, that was in the Guardian on Monday. Right, yeah, right. Which good. Guardian was that then? That was the National Guardian, usually known as the Manchester Guardian. It was edited oh, right. by C.P. Snow until 1954. Right. And it's now currently edited by Alan Rusbridger. Harry Potter. Beg your pardon? Harry Potter. You just said that out loud. Did you <laughs> know that? <laughs> it's a bit of a worry, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Pay no attention. It's because um, he's stoned, which we can all be now, apparently. Uh, we'll be stoned, yes. Yep, yes. We, can, we can all apparently. get stoned without fear of arrest. Mm. Well, we can have it com confiscated but not arrested mm. for yeah. possessing it. Mm. Yes, yes the, the actual material is arrested and not the person. <laughs> it should be a lot quicker, I yeah. think. So uh, he gets locked up away in the police station until they have a party. <laughs> <laughs> so much the same as it was before, yeah. yes. <laughs> Um, so what has the Tories' response to this been thus far? Oh, uh, Anne Widdicombe's uh, stepped forward and said it's a dealer's charter. She was saying these words, you didn't have a clue what she was talking about. <laughs> well, she's obviously stoned. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe should be. Um... <laughs> what did Duncan Smith say? Ian and Duncan Smith, please. <laughs> Let's not have any favouritism. <laughs> right. um, I think Ian would be very upset if he was being left out. I think they both said yep. that, uh, <laughs> that they were in the middle of uh, policy review. That's right. So Probably arguing with each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and who's the uh, the big royal drug connection? Oh, Tom Tom Pugwell, mm. perhaps, yes has, yes, has been known to... Um, but no longer. <laughs> no. So no, he says. He does, <laughs> he's yes. clean now, is he? So he says. He's still got that police caution, though, hasn't he, for class A and B. That's right. Yes. Little... So he just needs C and he'll have the full set. <laughs> <laughs> Is there an A star? <laughs> <laughs> he uh, blamed it on what, Tom, at the time? Tom what? But it used to be in East Enders. <laughs> Lofty. <laughs> Wasn't his fault, surely. He blamed it. <laughs> Stress. He blamed it on what, what? Tom, Tom? Question mark. Do you watch East Enders? 
Uh, I used to. Yeah, something's improved. I was watching the National Television Awards the other day, oh. and I never watched EastEnders. I, I'd never really seen it. But it seems, it's every bit of EastEnders always like people whispering in a threatening way. He's <laughs> like, I told you not to do that, didn't I? <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, leave it out. <laughs> Is that what it's always like? Just yeah. like that? Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah like, it has they've got a writer's Bible. There are only two oh, scenes. There's someone comes in and says, What's going on? <laughs> and then the other one says, Leave it out. <laughs> and that's it. That's yeah. the end of the programme. Yeah. So, you don't there. understand, Dolly. <laughs> I ain't going to talk to you anymore. Extraordinary. It's almost like we were in Albert Square, isn't it? Uh, Shut it. <laughs> This is uh, the news that cannabis laws are to be relaxed. Tabloid economists have been debating the pros and cons of cannabis use. I never smoked it, but many of my friends who do are now struggling to find decent jobs, uh, wrote a journalist for the Daily Express. <laughs> <laughs> so, as predicted by Nostradamus when he said the mighty pillar beyond the hidden cave will be split asunder by earthquake and flood, the scores are for all. Yes. Our next round is literally exceptional. A number of people uh, link from which one stands out. Who and why is the least we need to know. Just one per team. Paul and Jenny, your slightly royal foursome, are these seven. Andrew and Fergie, Prince Charles, Gavin Davies and the three little pigs. Blimey. Um, do they still live together, do they? Fergie and, Fergie and Andrew live together. Yeah. The three little married. pigs were forced to share. They live together. Yeah. Charles lives with Camilla, more or less, and Gavin... Oh is um, happily married. I think his wife works for Gordon Brown. Is the wrong answer. Oh, well done. <laughs> uh, but well deduced. How, um, can it be, how can it be well deduced? <laughs> well, because it all makes sense. It could have been so that. it could be right. Yeah, well, yes. where, where would Sherlock Holmes right. be if somebody said, well, that's well deduced, but you've hung the wrong man? Lean it out, copper. All the pigs own their own homes. Good. Whereas Prince Charles is, is um, part of belongs to it's the nation. This is a terrible yeah. answer. No, no quite, well, it's not that far. It does involve some home truths, right. which is a domestic. Okay. Ah, we'll well, see. you see, yes, the okay. Friedel pigs built their own homes. Yes, they did. And that makes them, the others have, um, haven't built their own homes. Ah, uh, no, Fergie and Andrew built their own home in South Fork. And Very Gavin good. Davis. <laughs> Gavin <laughs> Davis yes, built nice his own home. So Prince Charles has got one out. He's the right answer. Yes, Andy and Fergie designed uh, South York, which is also called South, South Pork. Pork. Uh, Tesco Towers is the other name. Why apparently. is it called Tesco Towers? Because it looks a bit like Tesco's. Is it? Have you got a picture of it? No. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not willing to believe you. Oh, no. <laughs> Doesn't uh, look the slices like Tesco's. Do you want to fight or? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, Ian, don't. He's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> leave it out. <laughs> Uh, and, it, and the bathroom has a nautical theme. The bathroom has a nautical theme. What is water in it? <laughs> What's this nautical theme? Uh, no, there's a twin-sized tub, the shape of a boat. Perfect for Ian and Duncan Smith. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what to get him for Christmas. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yes, and Gavin Davis, he's uh, the BBC chairman, who's designed his house in uh, Devon. And what does that look like? You're not allowed to show people's houses. I oh, know, quite right. No. Well, what about the pigs? Not much privacy for them. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be easy to identify where that particular brick house is. <laughs> if I were a big bad wolf looking for something to huff and puff. <laughs> and uh, Prince Charles is the odd one out as uh, he's designed his own garden. Jenny, have you been to Highgrove? I have, yes. Just for a little chat. A cup of tea. Did he receive any phone calls whilst he was talking to you at all? <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yes, from anyone yeah. particularly interesting? I don't know, he didn't say. Right. No, 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 he just uh, took the phone call. No clues? Like, hello, no. mum? <laughs> no. Then I got back to London, my beliefer went, and uh, it was a, a major news story. I think it was the divorce settlement, or something, the, the financial settlement. And I did realise that I'd been sitting there, um, actually with Prince Charles, face to face, when a major news story had happened. But that's not the first time things like that had happened to me. It frequently yeah. happens. I mean, I was in Buckingham Palace when Windsor Castle burnt down, nobody told me. <laughs> So you've got an alibi, then? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the answer is that they've all designed their own house, with the exception of Prince Charles, uh, who did, however, design his own garden at Highgrove on a traditional Muslim theme. Sadly, the garden was destroyed soon afterwards by American bombers, who were actually <laughs> aiming for an airstrip near Jalalabad. 
the three little pigs were unfairly portrayed in the children's story, as in fact pigs are the fourth most intelligent animals on Earth. This was recently confirmed at a livestock research centre when one pig poked his nose through the cage and told a government scientist that's a cow's brain you got there. <laughs> Ian and Andrew, your showbiz superstars are Rene Zellweger, Nigel Lithgow, Prince Philip, and a friend of Kenneth Clark. <laughs> Good gracious. That's his head, is it, being held by Philip? <laughs> <laughs> is this a losing weight question? Because Rene Zellweger lost, no, put on a huge amount mm -hmm. of weight to be in Bridget Jones. Kenneth Clark put on a huge amount of weight to run for the Tory. <laughs> Leadership. Mm -hmm. Nasty <clears throat> Nigel. He was on a programme called um, <laughs> something or other where they found a pop group. Right. Called Hearsay. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please then applaud it, only encourage him. Um, I'll give you one because you're sort of fumbling around uh, in the right area. The answer is that they've all advised uh, other people to lose weight in order to become more successful. Uh, except Rene Zellweger, uh, who put on two stones to star in uh, Bridget Jones. Who did Clark advise? Uh, well, a friend of Clark advised Kenneth Clark right. um, to lose weight, uh, well, to lose his beer belly, baggy suits, cigars and hush puppies if he wanted to win the election. He didn't want to win the election. Why is that, then? Well, they're unelectable and uh, all these terrible people who make up the Conservative Party parliamentary ranks are all squabbling and it's been most unhappy time for a man who's on very large earner with the tobacco giants. I mean... Are you saying politics... he deliberately threw the race? That's quite an it. accusation, isn't it? You think he misled all his supporters? He didn't want to win. He didn't want to win. No, not at mm. all. Not at all. Would you want to win? Would I didn't stand. No, right. <laughs> I think Duncan right. Smith thought he was going to lose as well. Mm. Well, <laughs> Ian was very confident. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan wasn't so confident. But Ian's always been the most optimistic of the two. He was born first, actually. Was he? <laughs> yeah, often the way. Yeah, by five years. A surprise for his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Although uh, Kenneth Clark did to go to a great deal of uh, trouble in order to get elected, including the odd photo opportunity. I feel rather more confident about success as leader of the Conservative Party than I do driving one of these. Both <laughs> legs side. straight. Yeah. One hand on either side. And then that's it. Prince Philip, who did he tell to lose weight? Yeah. Duchess of York, I should think. Well, it was actually a 13-year-old boy the in Salford. The King of Tonga. No? Was it a 13-year-old boy in Salford? It was a 13-year-old boy in Salford. <laughs> So the Nigel man was rude to all these aspiring people uh, yes, and said, yes. lose weight. Yeah. Well, to one in particular, yes, Kim of Hearsay, who, with whom, of course, you'll be familiar. Um, <laughs> yes, not yes. Danny, then. No, <laughs> otherwise I'm going to say Danny. He was recognised um, recently um, in a bar, Nigel Lithgow. Dustin Hoffman actually went up to him and said, I love your programme, I'm a big fan of yours. And Nigel said, I love your movies. <laughs> but you could do with moment. losing some weight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nigel Lithgow is unashamedly proud of his record in light entertainment, boasting, Blind Date will still be on television when you and I are dead. Suddenly, global biological warfare doesn't seem quite so bad. <laughs> which, um, which fast talking uh, means at the end of this lightweight discussion, it's uh, Paul and Jenny, uh, whose chances are slim behind as they are 6'5. Our concluding round is also our last. A uh, gaping spread of headlines with the usual black oblongs, including some or less from this week's guest publication, the quite excellent Caves and Caving, <laughs> the <laughs> Taliban equivalent of Homes and Garden. <laughs> so stand by for. Invincible Ant attacks what? Spider Man. <laughs> Prince Philip. Prince Philip. Deck. Uh, it's not Prince Philip. <laughs> <laughs> it is, in fact, everything in its path. Oh. Uh, this is the South American fire ant, found where? In South America. No, Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> it's moved. <laughs> Next. Foot and mouth hits what? Sheep. Uh, Cows. Uh, Mike no. and Bernie Winters. <laughs> Prince um, Philip. Caves. Bats. Uh. Uh, it's very nearly caves. Um, coves. <laughs> Uh, not that similar. Uh, slightly longer. 
Um, underground cabins. dwellings. Cabins. Uh, no, cavers. Oh. Okay. Yes. Oh. All caving remains out, uh, except for caves with direct access from a public road. Uh, in which case, presumably you could just drive in. <laughs> um, next, giant bat triumphs over what? Invincible N. <laughs> <laughs> it's going on to beat Prince Philip in the finals. <laughs> uh, uh, cave. Major. Cave, cave. Giant ball. Um, <laughs> it's not from caves. <laughs> not from <laughs> caving. Uh, Adversity. It's it a, a heartwarming tale. Yes. <laughs> about how this bat has overcome yes. drink problems. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> bad marriage. <laughs> Yeah. It's a different story, oh, Ian. Um, <laughs> fruit farmer is the answer. Fruit this is farmer. the spectacled flying fox bat, so called uh, because it's a type of bat. <laughs> uh, next, what found in cave? Earl of Wessex. <laughs> Stalactites. Uh, no. It's Stalic not, mites. not bin laden, is it? <laughs> it's no. not bin laden, or, or even bin laden. bin laden. No. Well, you say bin laden, I say bin, bin laden. laden. <laughs> Not, in fact, him, but Keith Pearson found. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. the hell is anybody meant to get that? <laughs> and finally, French woman takes what into space? Jacques Keith. Chirac. <laughs> now, if you didn't notice, Jacques Chirac's got this enormous capacity, apparently. So his wife tells us. You so mean enormous capacity? What time's this programme? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the moment, you're live. <laughs> <laughs> when he... He's a great womanizer, apparently, and she said, Remember, Jack, when Napoleon left Josephine, things started turning pear shaped. Oh my God, did you see a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> pear shaped? <laughs> so now you're going to have an enormous pony... capacity if you're going to go pear shaped. Yeah. Yeah. A pomegranate, you wouldn't complain, but pear shaped. <laughs> Is that yeah. the end of your running? Yeah. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Keith Pearson. It doesn't relate to Keith. Chutney. Prince Euro. Philip. Euro. No. Uh, Gérard Depardieu. French woman, no. Oh, none like of these things. Like uh, takes a teddy bear into space. Oh, yeah. is the oh, answer. Oh, that's yeah. sweet. Yeah. You didn't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get any say in the matter. Well, uh, it's cruel then. <laughs> <laughs> All of which uh, ritual slaughter means at the end of tonight's Mr. cull, this week's sacrificial Mr. lambs are uh, Paul and Jenny with five. This week's sacred cows are Ian and Andrew with eight. So the latest Prince video to our winners, the latest Prince Edward video to our losers. Uh, and I leave you with news that in the Afghan conflict, there's a tricky moment for one Gurkha when his colleague spots a wasp. <laughs> At an international summit of coalition leaders, George Bush suddenly realises he's missing Sesame Street. <laughs> and as the Blairs return from a weekend break, a friend of Ewan says thank you for letting them hold last night's rave at Chequers. <laughs> Good night. And I can tell you, if you enjoy that good natured savagery, stay with us for some sparkling wit from John Diamond guesting. And have I got 1992 for you? That's next.